Hello everybody, welcome back to Tom Reads Things. My name's Tom, I hope you are all very, very, very well. So today is the 17th of November, we're halfway through the month and I haven't done a, a booktube video around non-fiction November, um, which is ridiculous really. Um, so I am not actually reading any non-fiction this November, but I did want to uh, have a chat with you about some of my favourite non-fiction books. <music> So yes, in celebration of Nonfiction November, I've got a Labrador thrashing around on the floor. We've got like a jute rug in the living room and he, it's really tough and he loves rubbing, him, rubbing his back on it. So that's the noise that you can hear. Look at this little minstrel here. Come here, come here. Um, so yes, in celebration of Nonfiction November, I wanted to talk you through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of my favourite non-fiction books, uh, some of which I've read all the way through, some of which I haven't even started, and some of which I um, kind of duck in and out of every now and again. Um, so the first book that I wanted to talk to you about is A Secret History of George and London by Dan Cruikshank. So this is an absolutely fantastic book. I found this in a charity shop um, uh, just outside King's Cross in London, um, a couple, uh, quite a few years back now actually, and instantly picked it up. I was like, that is right up my street. This looks at um, basically the sex trade in uh, 18th century London, um, and it looks at uh, some really interesting um, uh, kind of political elements of 18th century London, investigates some really, really, really interesting characters that were around at that time, and gives you a real insight into the kind of dark, gritty, plush and elegant elements of 18th century London. So yeah, this is such a fantastic book. It's quite big and I'm actually quite wary with non-fiction. It has to be something that I'm really, really, really interested in um, to actually engage with it properly, which is why actually a lot of these books are focused around, have kind of historical elements to them or are focused around figures in history um, because that's something that really interests me and I, I find it difficult to read non-fiction books that aren't focused on something that I really, really, really find interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm so interested in 18th century London, especially mid to late 18th century London or the Georgian London as as, as you may know it. Um, there is some fantastic fiction written around that time, including The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. Sorry, written about that time, not around that time. Um, like The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. And that is really what made me fall in love, that and this book with um, mid to late 18th century London um, or mid to late 18th century um, Britain really. Um, so there's, I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to do Vlogmas this year, guys. <gasps> um, but I'm going to be doing a Vlogmas video looking specifically at 18th century literature or books about 18th century, uh, London and Britain. So if you've got any recommendations, cause I haven't actually read that much. If you've got any recommendations, um, for, for books to read for that, do let me know. Cause I do need to do a bit more research into that before I do it. And also I'm kind of toying with the idea about doing something on my channel next year, um, maybe some kind of, I don't know if it'd be like a readathon or what it would be, just some kind of thing um, talking about Georgian literature and literature about the Georgian era. Um, so yeah, do let me know if you've got any recommend book recommendations for that kind of thing and um, whether that's something you'd be interested in watching or not. The next book I haven't actually read yet, but I absolutely adore this author and I love one of her other books, which I actually have on my list as well. And that is uh, Lucy Worsley's Jane Austen at Home. Now, I've seen the BBC documentary. I don't know if it's BBC actually, but I've seen the documentary that followed that um, sort of accompanies this book. And I found it so, so, so interesting. Lucy Worsley really has a, a unique way of pulling out the human side of these historical figures and really um, engaging in an interesting way, uh, talking about their lives and um, explaining different elements of their lives um, th through the books that she writes. So for, for this one, she's done it through Jane Austen's home. So she's told the story of Jane Austen's life through the places where she lived. Um, I know this is bit, this is really popular with, with some people on booktube, so do let me know if you've read this. I'm super looking forward to getting to it. Um, and it's just a gorgeous cover as well. I mean, look at that, look at that. Um, I adore Lucy Worsley, and if you haven't picked up any of her other books, please do, she is absolutely brilliant. 
Moving on now from the Georgian and Regency period into a bit of a Victober flashback. Oh God, I miss Victober. Um, and the next book that I want to talk to you about is The Bronte Sisters, Life, Loss and Literature by Catherine Rayner. So um, my father-in-law, Bob, uh, got me this last Christmas. Um, I haven't actually read it yet. I had wonderful plans of reading it for Victober, but never actually got around to reading it. Um, I love the Bronte sisters, I love their work, but kind of even more, I love the story of the Bronte sisters. I love, um, I love, you know, the, 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 the story of their lives. I love that they're kind of characters in a novel themselves, along with their brother Bramwell and their father Patrick. Um, the things that they did were absolutely remarkable. Um, the, the the literature that they wrote and also the things that they did with their own lives in terms of traveling to Europe to work and things like that a lot of people don't realize that they that they had these um kind of broader lives outside of the parsonage in Haworth in Yorkshire um they they had they were very well educated um quite well traveled so yes I'm really 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 looking forward to getting to this I have been obsessed with the documentary to walk invisible for quite a long time um so I'm interested to read this sorry the to walk invisible is not a documentary it's an Amazon Prime um uh what do you call it um like film really about the brontes and it's bloody brilliant so do give it a go i've got a tiny cocker spaniel she loves me so much she loves to kiss me on my face and i love her so much <laughs> So the next book that I would like to talk about is the second book um, from this author that I'm talking about in this video, and that is Lucy Worsley, Queen Victoria, Daughter, Wife, Mother, Widow. So I read this earlier on in the year and absolutely adored it. As I said before, Lucy Worsley has a really unique way of telling um, a, a historical figure's uh, life story um, with Jane Austen. She does it through the places where she lived. Um, and with Queen Victoria, she picks out certain days in her life um, that represent the different time periods when she lived. So when she was a, a day in her a life of when she was a daughter, a wife, a mother and a widow. And I found it so, so, so interesting. Um, there's some excellent uh, photographs in here as well and uh, and pictures. Look at them. Look at, look at Albert and Victoria. Um, I know some other uh, booktubers who have read this and really, really, really enjoyed it. I think Emily at Novel Novels has read this actually i can't remember um and and enjoyed it so yes this is just absolutely brilliant and again look at that cover the next two books that i want to talk about are actually um accompaniments to um television series and they are the victoria letters and victoria and albert a royal love affair so these are accompaniments to the IT, I believe it's ITV series Victoria, um, which I really need to catch up on, actually. I watched um, pretty much all of the first series, but I think there's quite a few other series that I haven't actually got to yet. Um, but it is a very autumnal thing to watch, so maybe I'll watch some of that today. Who knows? These are, are accompaniments, as I said, to those ITV series, and Mark generally gets me these for um, Christmas and my birthday, and I really, really love them. They're really nice uh, gifts to get. Um, they... Look, this one, I believe, is um, the Queen Victoria letters. So it looks at letters that she wrote to Albert and to other people as well and kind of explores that. It's got some really nice imagery from Kensington Palace, where she grew up. I was recently in Kensington Palace, actually. Um, uh, for my last video of October, I did a tour of Victorian London. So I'll try and link that video down below if you're interested in having a nosy round Kensington Palace and where Queen Victoria grew up. Um, they're just really nice uh, books to have. Uh, so a lot of information here, both about Queen Victoria and about the series, and then some nice images from the series as well. Um, this isn't an ad, by the way. <laughs> and following on from that theme, I also have the accompaniment to Netflix's The Crown. Um, I think this came out at, uh, off the back of season one. And sorry, can we all just talk about the fact that The Crown season three is out today, available to watch on Netflix? Again, this is not an ad, but I'm so excited. I love The Crown. I love Olivia Colman. I love Helena Bonham Carter. I'm really interested to see what they do with the writing. Um, and I'm just so, so, so excited. Might get, might get a blanket, put the fire on, have a cup of tea eat some food, watch The Crown. Oh my God, my Sunday's gonna be brilliant. Look, 
you've got Claire Foy and Her Majesty the Queen on the back as well. Um, it's really, really nice. I love these kind of books. They're really nice to have on the shelves. And again, it kind of goes through, um, it kind of goes through the Queen's life and also looking at how, what they did with the series. Um, so yeah, really nice books to have. I love these. So yes, The Crown, The Inside History. So the next book that I want to talk about is Burley, A Guide to the Paintings. So earlier on this year, I went to, um, in the summer, Mark and I went to Burley House in Stamford, near where we live, and it blew my mind. I had no idea that we lived so close to such an opulent, amazing gem of British history. It's absolutely fascinating. It was enormous. For anyone who doesn't know, um, it was it was the family seat of Lord Burley, who was a who was a big part of Queen Elizabeth's court, Queen Elizabeth I's court, um, in uh, God knows what year it was. Um, but it's an absolutely fascinating place to look around. So yeah, I'll link that video down below if you want to go and have a nosy around there as well. And this is a guide to the paintings. They have some extraordinary paintings at Burley, and this is look, this kind of gives you an, a, a bit of a look as to what what we're kind of working with here. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, some of these paintings are absolutely amazing. And it was really nice to kind of buy this guide because it, it talks you through all of the different paintings as you're going round. So you can follow it as you go round. And look at that cover, look at that painting. When you actually see this painting um, in real life at Burley, the colours, even though it was painted so long ago, the colours are so bright and opulent still. It was just absolutely brilliant. So yeah, this is a, I guess, I don't even know if this is actually a book but it's like a pamphlet, if you will. So I thought I'd show you anyway. So the next book that I want to show you is Treasured Possessions from the Renaissance to the Enlightenment. So I bought this from the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, which is the main sort of museum of the University of Cambridge. And it's such an amazing resource of art um, in the UK. It's it's one of the most amazing museums I've ever been to and I bought this which I think accompanied one of their, their exhibitions that they had um, there and this is Treasured Possessions as I said from the Renaissance to the Enlightenment and it kind of it's basically like a catalogue of all of these amazing artefacts um, that you that were in this exhibition or that, that, um, that are like the things in the exhibition and it was just absolutely amazing and so interesting. I love history and I love looking at things from history um, and like looking like look you can see like different kinds of like sugar bowl and things like that and it's just absolutely fascinating. I love looking around the, the uh, Fitzwilliam Museum and seeing all of the different um, seeing all of the different uh, bits and pieces that they have there. Um, yeah it's really 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 interesting and it's such a nice thing to have just on a, like a Sunday afternoon if you fancy like flicking through a couple of um, uh, pages of this and looking at really interesting objects and reading about what those objects meant, um, how they were used and things like that. It's just just a nice thing to have really. And it was really reduced as well. This was originally £25 and I got it for £5 so bargain. The last book that I want to talk to you about is a book that I've already discussed on this channel a little bit, and that is Fire and Ball, How to Decorate by Joa Studham and Charlotte Cosby. Um, so I am a little bit obsessed with Joa Studham. Joa Studham is, I believe, the global colour consult, director of colour or something for Fire and Ball, and she's so clued up when it comes to interior design and colour complements and lighting and all of those kind of things. Um, uh, I find I just find it really interesting. I think I find it so interesting because she's like at the top of her game and I really find people who are at the top of their game really interesting no matter what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, she, she's really clued up and she's written this with Charlotte Cosby who is also a colour director at Far and Ball and they've written this book to kind of basically tell you the kind of some of the, not do's and don'ts of decorating but some of the like... Um, some of the some handy hints and tips really when it comes to interior design so one of the things that they've got in here is um uh is like little things like this which you can color in using their paints so you can see what they'd look on exterior situations um they've also got um uh you know they've got uh they've got some information like if you're going to paint a room dark 
then what is the best white to complement that or what is the best other colours to complement that? So it, it looks at like red based neutrals, for example. So they've got lots of neutrals which are more red based and the, the different colour combinations that you can have for like things like skirting and doors and walls and bits and pieces like that. So, yeah, it's it's so, so, so interesting. Yeah. Which white they've got here. So which white of theirs goes best with all of their other colours, which was really useful in here. So we've got so our um our walls are painted in Manor House grey and the white that was recommended to go with it was Wevit, um, which is what the fireplace is. Um so yeah, it was it was it was this book that taught me that actually if you're if you have a small room with not much light, don't paint it like bright white to try and brighten it up because it just won't work. You'll end up with quite a, a dull looking room embrace the fact that it's small and dark and doesn't have much light and paint it a dark colour make it a small cozy um nook if you like so yeah i really 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 like this book it's because it's been really valuable to us while we've been um redecorating our house and it it just looks lovely as well gorge right i'm gonna shut up now um so thank you very much for watching i hope you're all enjoying non-fiction november do let me know what you're reading for non-fiction november um in the comment section down below and also um i have decided off the back of my last video that yes i'm definitely going to do vlogmas i'm really 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 excited about it i'm the most next to lauren in the books i'm the most christmasy person you'll ever bloody meet um so i'm yeah i'm really 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 looking forward to it um, but I would like to hear some of your ideas for things that you'd like to see um, for Vlogmas videos. Obviously, there's like 25 videos that I've got to put up in between the 1st of December and 25th. So do let me know the kinds of things you want to see. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.